Greetings, everyone, in the wonderful name of Yeshua HaMashiach. It's Nick Vanderlaan from Jerusalem. It's May 19th, 2018. It's also, more importantly, the 30th day of the second month on Elohim's Esian, Enoch solar calendar. I got some great news, guys. About a month ago, I shared that spreadsheet with you guys, the biblical anniversaries that I was doing, and I've been updating it, and it's about 98% complete. I've gone through all of the canon. I've left out the book of Esther because no copy of the book of Esther found in Qumran where the Dead Sea Scrolls were found. And then also I've added a record from the book of Gad, a record from the book of Enoch, and I'm starting to go through some of the additional writings outside of the 66 book canon, as well as I am in the process of updating the New Testament writings. There's not a lot of dates according to the Gospels of when events happened. So I'm going through the Gospels and I found a very a couple of very significant dates that I put on this calendar that I was able to recognize according to the patterns. Because as you know, uh, Yahweh, he is an Elohim of patterns in his creation and uh, some very fascinating stuff. So again, I, I want to clarify real quick that I call it Elohim's Esian Enoch calendar as I've been coming to the understanding of this calendar and learning about it and studying more about it I think that this is the correct title for it because it distinctly defines that the rules that we're using for this calendar or that I adhere to are the rules that were found according to how the Esians kept it so there's a lot of people out there with their own rules the rules that I go by are the generally the most accepted rules of everyone it's the rules of the Essenes. So they were the ones that preserved the calendar for us. Hallelujah, we have it today. And they're the ones that kept the rules and they kept this calendar then. So if anyone would know how to keep it 2,000 years ago, it was them. Let's talk a little bit about the Essenes, okay? Because I'm coming more into an understanding of the Essenes. Hallelujah, it's just, it's pretty awesome to see. But one of the things that the Ruach of Truth, the Spirit of Truth showed me is that Yeshua, he had contentions with the Pharisees, with the Sadducees, but he did not have any type of contentions with the Essene sect, and there were, they were definitely a presence during his time period here. Okay, another thing is, is that the Essenes were in Qumran. Well, who else? Qumran's on the Dead Sea, right next to the Jordan, like maybe two kilometers away from the Jordan River, maybe four. But this is the area that John the Baptist was at. Beyond that. This is not only where the Dead Sea Scrolls were found, but you guys should look it up. The Copper Scroll forensic detective uh, from Oklahoma named Jim Barnfield, he looked at this Copper Scroll and he placed the pieces together. And he believes that the Temple Treasures, the Ark of the Covenant, and the Tabernacle of Moses, all of these things are hidden in sites in Qumran, either in caves that have been covered up and also underneath the community of Qumran buried in the ground there. So uh, what are the temple treasures would, you know, possibly doing there? Well, what are these, these scrolls being preserved? Another thing about Qumran, guys, that I found that you guys need to check out, you can research Cave 7 of Qumran. Okay, these were uh, papyri that they believed to be New Testament writings from dated around 50 CE. So you guys need to check out K7, Qumran writings, papyri, New Testament writings, okay? The Qumran was a sect of people that were separated, okay? They weren't adhering to the Pharisees or the Sadducees, and they were out doing their thing of being set apart to Elohim. They were a very strict sect, and another interesting thing about these guys is that even to this day, at Qumran, they use John the Baptist as part of a film saying that he was possibly from this sect. Yes, a majority of the people that visit there are Christians going to this site, so they have adopted the story of John the Baptist. There hasn't been any archaeological evidence that has linked him to this site. But if you really think about it, Qumran was only a couple of kilometers away in the same valley region, the same desert region of Judea, away from the Jordan River. And so if the priestly system was corrupt with all of the pagan idolatry that they had going on in the temple, John's father, who was a priest, 
he wouldn't want his child to be brought up into that way. So he went out to the desert, to this community possibly. It's totally plausible. But getting back to it. So let's go ahead and look into this biblical anniversary calendar. I'm really happy to announce that it's 90, almost like 99% done, I would say. Um, and get into some of the findings. But more so, guys, this is a publicly shared calendar with this link. So please take a look at it for yourself. You'll be so blessed when you see all of the events that are stacked on top of each other and the patterns that Elohim has done. And I mean, so what, oh, I forgot. Also what I've done is uh, the Book of Jubilees as well. I went through the Book of Jubilees and there was significant records in the Book of Jubilees of biblical anniversaries that I had no idea. I, this it blew my mind when I read through the book of Jubilees looking for these dates and what I found regarding the patriarchs of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and how, and even Noah and how significant these feast days, these hogs are to Elohim and what they represent and the visitations of Elohim to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob on these dates. It's so important, guys, to see this thing, so if, uh, you'll be so blessed. So please click on the link in the description. I'm constantly updating it. If you find any dates that are not on this calendar or have any different ideas to some New Testament dates of Yeshua, please send me messages in this comments and direct me to them, and let's discuss and let's see the differences, or let's add on these apocryphal dates that you have found and let's let's see if we could put these in here and how they line up so guys i hope you're blessed hallelujah i was so blessed to put this together and let's go ahead and get into it okay guys here is the spreadsheet so it's pretty amazing you can take a look at all of the events that happened on the first day of, of the first month okay this is a very significant time um, let's go ahead and scroll down and let's see what else is here as we scroll, you know, you have uh, events that happened on Passover during the week of unleavened bread. We documented Saul's trip as he went through the Mediterranean. But really, I want to focus on we have the Jericho march on here, guys. There's so many events on here, but the real events that are really significant that I feel are the event, every event is significant according to Elohim because they all bring glory to him and serve as a witness to his mighty works that he has done throughout the ages. But when you get in here on these feast days, on his hogs, I mean, there's just so many things. So we're coming up on Shavuot. There's so much significance on Shavuot. Um, one of the things that I want to hopefully bless you guys with was what happened here on the 14th day of the third month in Exodus. Moses was instructed by Elohim to tell the Israelites to sanctify themselves for two days, their garments, to wash their garments, to get ready. And what had happened was, so that was one day on the 14th. Well, that was also to be done on the 15th. Now, a lot of people think that the Ten Commandments were given on the 15th, but that's erroneous. The Ten Commandments were actually given on the 16th. We know this because it was given in Jubilees 24-2 that this happened. And so we put this on it. This is when the day that Yahweh Elohim descended upon Mount Sinai and audibly spoke the Ten Commands. Well, what is interesting to me that I want to talk about was this is actually the day that Moses started his 40-day supernatural fast. Well, I was thinking about this. Yeshua would have been here for the feast date because it's on record that he came to Jerusalem as a male to appear before Elohim for the feasts from when he was a young child to throughout his ministry. But what's important that you understand is that he was required to be in Jerusalem on the 15th day of the third month for Shavuot. Well, I suspect that he was baptized, okay, the following day on the 16th, the day that the Ten Commandments were given. And not only that, he was baptized in the Jordan. And the Jordan River is around 30 kilometers there. It would have been a 30-kilometer journey, which would have taken him around six hours to walk. They used to walk a lot more back then than we do nowadays. So they were used to these walks. So he would have been here in Jerusalem for Shavuot, as he was supposed to do, to fulfill, 
as he fulfilled every letter of the law. And then what happened was, and he taught us how to teach, keep the commands of Elohim. And what it would happen was he would have walked that next, woke up that next morning sometime and walked the journey. And then sometime in that afternoon, he would have been baptized by Yohanan, his cousin, John the Baptist, in the Jordan River. And that's when he would have started the same, his same 40-day fast, that same pattern, just like Moses started his 40-day fast on this day, on the 16th day of the third month. So guys, this is I was so blessed when I saw this while I was putting this together, and I hope you guys are blessed too, and I hope you guys go through this biblical anniversaries calendar to see how awesome our Elohim is and how he has ordained these events, these moeds, these appointed times, guys, and how they all line up and the fulfillment. Now, guys, there's so many things that happen on Shavuot and many of these days, but there's not a lot of, I think, not a lot of biblical anniversaries that happened on the fall feasts. It's, it's very thin. So I think that there's going to be a lot of fulfillments you know, when Yeshua comes back for that. And I'm going to be doing a couple of videos on it. But So guys, please click the link below. Please share this with your friends and your family. All praise, glory to our Savior and our Master, Yeshua HaMashiach, and to the Father, Yahweh, mighty Elohim. And so please, guys, Subscribe to my channel if, you, if, if you're blessed by this information. Share my channel. Share this information with the people that you know. And shalom and shalom.